Okay, everybody, we're back here again um, with something new. I've done all kinds of airplanes, canards and um, flying wings and deltas and uh, twin boom pusher, regular conventional airplane. And I had this 8 by 30 inch uh, piece of pink foam left from some other projects. And I decided, well, you know, I'll take my conventional uh, tractor airplane and uh, put it on there uh, and see what I get. And I just decided to crunch some numbers before I started this. And um, I realized that I was going to add on, uh, in the end, it was about a 12% increase in weight. But the bottom wing has dimensions uh, such that... Uh, it's uh, equal to, almost exactly equal to the top wing in this case. Bottom wing is, uh, you know, uh, about forty something inches by six and a half inches cord, and the top wing is eight inches uh, cord by thirty inches span. And so I doubled the wing area for only a twelve percent increase in weight. Of course, the increase in weight. Uh, requires a bit more throttle on hand launching to accelerate it up to speed but not a whole lot more and um, this wing here is a little bit interesting I mean everyone's seen biplanes before uh, and I'll discuss the advantages and disadvantages of that in a minute but what I did here in order to reduce weight as much as possible was uh, the carbon fiber spar is for stiffness and then I just used packing tape to create the airfoil shape I think you can see that it actually is a real airfoil shape there uh, you know not the perfect airfoil but certainly an airfoil not a KF kind of thing or a flat wing um, so the advantage of having you know this incredibly increased amount of wing area is of course you get extremely low wing loading and you know you, you can do really tight loops uh, and extremely tight turns and now you, when you watch those old you know movies about World War One airplanes and you see how incredibly tight they turn or how incredibly tight they loop you understand why because they've got you know these uh, very low wing loading airplanes but there's always a catch, there's always a trade-off and the trade-off here is uh, with these biplanes in general uh, is that your glide performance is absolutely horrid the uh, additional uh, structure to attach uh, the top wing to the bottom wing and just all that additional drag added by the uh, top wing so even though you, you're floating very slowly because it's got extremely light wing loading you've also got uh, that a very high uh, amount of additional drag so your forward progress during a glide uh, is very very bad so you can have a lot of uh, endurance you stay up in the air a long time because you've got that low wing loading but you don't make a whole lot of forward progress so your glide ratio is, is absolutely horrid um, and I wanted to just point out uh, construction methods here uh, so I have this central tower here that um, I attached the uh, top wing to uh, the bottom wing with and I find that just using tape strapping tape uh, you know and the appropriate amounts is actually in my opinion even better than hot glue uh, it seems to be somewhat lighter and uh, it's just a lot easier to uh, take things off and adjust things if you need to make adjustments uh, of course I have to cut out the bottom of this tower to conform to the upper uh, curve of the wing the camber of the uh, bottom wing um, and then I, of course I have the you know these over here actually don't really provide much you know structural strength in terms of attaching the top wing and bottom wing together they just make sure that the wing tips are on the same the wing tips of the uh, 
top wing on their same relative position to the bottom wing on both sides. You know, of course, I have the on, on the other side the same thing. Um, and now, because you have this extremely low wing loading wing, so this uh, rear elevator and aileron, uh, uh, real elevator uh, and horizontal stabilizer, uh, which were before, uh, you know, not too sensitive, uh, but now because of the extremely light wing loading, you just give uh, tiny inputs. I mean, I'm talking about tiny inputs on the uh, elevator, and it just, uh, you know, has an extremely uh, large reaction in the air. Uh, of course, I could just adjust the uh, arm on the control horn and so on and so forth, but I w wanted to do like a comparison to see how it would react. Um, some of you may have guessed by now by looking at the engine bay and the, the lower wing that I actually use this engine bay and lower wing in many different designs. And actually, this particular wing here, uh, the lower wing I'm talking about, uh, has been uh, around for a long time.